great! More robots we can get to work at Home Depot! Awesome! Get him an apron! Hey, what's up, my peoples? MGo here, the freaking geek himself, and today we will be reviewing the Warbatron Turbo Ejector. So here we are, and there he is. And first and foremost, as always, we'll take a quick look at the packaging. Very, very nice packaging. I'll bet they spent a lot of money on this packaging. <laughs> but very nice. Pretty much, I knocked him over. I killed him. I'm sorry. Get over here. Uh, very nice, like, premium level packaging here. We have Collection Warbitron W3OA. You do have this nice little slip that's over it to hold everything in place, but since this is going in the trash, I'm just going to rip it right off. So there we have that. We have a nice picture here of the combined mode in the back. A negative picture there. We got Warbitron, Warbitron, WB, the burger, 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 burger. Right there, you open up this magnetic flap, and you get to the tray that the figure sits in. You also get a nice piece of artwork right up there of Turbo Ejector. And the tray actually does slide out. There's this convenient little pull tab right here, this little fabric pull tab, which you can pull the tray right out. Uh, and it's very, very stuck in there. Uh, you need a lot of, uh, need some good elbow grease to, uh, Get that out. Then you just slide out the tray, slide out the figure. Very nicely done. Nice premium packaging. Yay. It's beautiful. It's a shame it's going in the garbage. Anyway, so moving right along, of course, included in the packaging, you do get the obligatory third-party collector's card with that same piece of artwork right there. And right there, you have another picture of Turbo Ejector, you have his skill, his strength, his intelligence, and uh, I don't think anything is misspelled. I don't, I don't think. I'm not too good at spelling myself, but anyway. <laughs> so there you go. Cards! Woo! No comic book! There's actually no comic book in this box, which is nice. So, moving right along, here we have Turbo Ejector himself, and this is the first figure of their not Computron, and this is their homage to the Technobot Afterburner, and uh, very cool, very nicely done. I will say already, this is definitely a step up from their uh, from their Bruticus figures. I, I will say it's it's filling me with confidence. I have confidence about this set. I hope they don't let me down. <laughs> but um, very cool. Oh, one thing I will say though, there is a little baggie of parts that you get in the box. Luckily, having messed with their Bruticus figures, I already know what these are for, so I didn't have to do any Googling, because again, there is no paperwork or anything in the box that tells you what this is for, um, but these are just some replacement ratchets for something on here. I don't know. Replacement ratchets, probably for the legs or the uh, the, uh, the combiner peg and whatnot. These, these might be gears for like the legs, I'm assuming. Some extra ratchets for the legs. Um, again, would be nice if there was just a piece of paper in there that said, hey, this is what these are for, and this is where they go. It would be nice. So they still haven't learned to do that much. They're still throwing stuff in the box and not telling you what to do with it. But luckily, having missed their Bruticus figures, I know what this stuff is. But again, if somebody passed on their Bruticus and is getting, you know, and this is their first figure they're getting from Warbitron, they're going to look at this and say, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this. So again... Paperwork would be nice when you throw extra stuff in the box, but hey, it is what it is. So, moving along with Afterburner himself, or Turbo Ejector, rather, here he is, in his, like, old futuristic motorcycle mode. Um, I don't know if this is based off of anything real, like the Tomahawk was. <laughs> It's still, this looks like a bat pod too, so hey, whatever. <laughs> this is a real thing, I'm going, this is a real thing. Let me give you some links and stuff so you can see the pictures, because, you know, I have to do that. But, um, you know, it's, it still looks pretty cool, definitely uh, reminiscent of uh, Afterburner's uh, G1 alt mode. Very cool, you do get some transclearance orange plastic right there. It is painted silver on the underside. So you get that little sheen to it. On the back, you get some more of that transclearing plastic. You get some silver, some grays, and some reds. 
you got some silver here, some gold, you got some silver up front. Um, you do get a little bit of like a, uh, of wear here on the, uh, on the tailpipes, you know, which is pretty cool. Make it look like, you know, there's been fire and exhaust shooting out of them, so they're kind of dirty. So that's, that's a neat little touch. Very cool. Underneath, you know, he does have visible head syndrome. I mean, his head is right there. Uh, of course, you can just turn it around so you can't see his face. But, um, yeah, that right there. Actually, does roll pretty well, which is nice. And he won't tip over just due to the to uh, the way the, the body of the robot is designed. He can't actually just tip all the way over. He'll only lean over slightly, so you, you can actually get a pretty good roll out of him, which is nice. And just for a comparison, here he is with Combiner Wars Voyager Prime. As you can see how he scales there. With a Combiner Wars Voyager. So, there you have that. There you have that. Not that you can see much, because the camera's too low. But, there you have that. And here he is with a Combiner Wars Deluxe. As you can see how it scales with the Deluxes. Right there. So, there you go, there you go, and there you go. And here it is with Warbatron's Airburst. They're not blast off, so you can see just how he scales. With the Warbatron dudes. Right there. So they're basically going for the same size with this combiner, which is nice, so he's going to be a big boy, which I do appreciate. Because I like big bots, and I cannot lie. So, there you have that. He does come with accessories. He does come with a gun right here. Well, he comes with two guns. They're both the same mold. And you can see right here, very nicely molded. You got some gold right up here. You got some silver right there. Silver on the back. Nice molded details. Very cool. And like I said, you do get two of them. Mine has a little bit of a paint splotch right here. Some of the gold <laughs> came off. <laughs> Spots a little bit of gold paint on there, but that's okay. You get two of these, and they do have pegs on the sides, so you can take them and plug them on either side of the wheel right here, if you wish. So you can plug them right there. And that looks pretty cool. I dig that. And there are also other ports on this guy, so you can take it, you can plug it right here if you want, there's a port further back, you can plug it right there if you want, there's a plug right up top here, you can plug it right there if you want. So, you have options for where you want to store the guns, which is nice, but I like them right there on that front wheel, I just think that looks really, really cool. So, there you have that. So, let's get right down to transformation, shall we? Let's, so... First thing we're going to do is we're going to go into his arm mode and then we'll go into robot mode. So, first thing you want to do is you just want to come back here. You want to flip up these little black pieces right here. Here's a little bit of parts forming. What? Parts forming? Worst story ever. Stop it. Just stop it. You do want to take this part and remove it. And one thing too, another thing. Again, the instructions are kind of... Eh, they're, they're good, but they're still kind of missing stuff because I want to know why these pieces are on hinges. I don't know why these pieces are on hinges. They serve no purpose for combined mode or robot mode or vehicle mode. I don't know why these are on hinges. I really don't know. The instructions say absolutely nothing about this. Nothing whatsoever. I don't know why. These are on hinges. And I want to know. If somebody knows... Please tell me. I don't know why I'm talking like this. I'm going to stop. Anyway. So, take that, put that off to the side. And now you're going to take the wheels right... Actually, first thing you want to do, before we get into all that, you want to come here to these side panels. You want to untab them, bring it back, bring that forward like that. And bring that back, bring that forward. Now, this is a little bit right here where it's, you know, tolerances, Orbitron tolerances. Uh, this piece right here is on hinges. It's also on a ball joint at the base. Um, you want to lift this up, and you want to be careful. You really, you really, you don't want to grab it from here. You want to grab it more back here where the actual joint is. You want to take it and just bring it up, and it's just... There's not a lot of clearance there, so you're really kind of pushing plastic past plastic. But once you get it up, 
it's fine. You can see, I mean, there's 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 not a lot of room there. There's not much of a gap. But anyway, once you have that done, you're going to take this front section here of that windshield and fold that in. And now you want to take this and fold this back down. So again, you want to hold it, you know, close to the joint itself and then just carefully just kind of push it down past that ledge. Carefully. And there you go. Boop. Like that. And get that back down. So there you go. That's the one issue of, you know, tolerances or patrol intolerances. But once you have that done, you're going to take this wheel, unpeg it. You see it just pegs in right there. Take this wheel and bring it all the way back. Bring it all the way back right there. You're going to untab this little section right here and bring it down. And these two tabs will just tab in right there. So just take that, tab that in right there. And then just bring the rest of this down. And you're going to take the legs and extend them. Which are minor tight. There we go. Whoosh. Jeez. I just undid everything. There we go. Hope I didn't just pop anything out. Did I? I think I did. <laughs> there we go. I think he's okay. I think he's okay. I think he's alright. So, once you have that done, you can take these pieces. The instructions tell you to take these pieces and just bring them back up. Then you're going to take the feet. You're going to just bring them up on that joint and bring them up on that joint like that. So bring that up, bring that up. Bring that up right there. This piece that we pulled off the back, you'll see there tabs right there that will tab into the slots right there. So just take that and tab that on like that. Once you have that done, you're going to take the arms. Let me raise this up a bit. Give myself some room to operate. So you're going to unpeg the arms right here. So you just peg in right there. And you're just going to bring the arm down and then bend the elbow so the forearm is now parallel with the waist. So you want it just like that. Do the same thing here, like that. Bring it down, fold that elbow so it's parallel with the waist. Right there, you notice we can see his face right now, so we're just going to take this panel and bring that up. Bring that back down, that covers up the face. Now you want to pull out the combined mode peg, which is really tight. Bring that up. And then, of course, you want to rotate the waist so the elbow is oriented properly. And uh, are we done? I think we're done. Yeah, there we go. There he is in his arm mode. Of course, there's no hand. Apparently, the hand will come with the, uh, with the main member. Um, but, yeah, there he is. There he is in his arm mode right there. So, of course, you get, you know, a bicep swivel. The, the knees do actually bend both ways, which is actually nice. So you can make use of that, and you have a double-jointed elbow right there. And, of course, the handle just sandwich in between the uh, the legs right there. So that's how that's going to work. And, of course, you get the rotation in the shoulders and whatnot, but that's once you get them all combined. And, of course, you can take the guns if you want and plug them wherever you want. You still have access to all those ports right there, right there. Plug them right here. You can plug them right here so you can have some, uh, some forearm cannons. Totally up to you how you want to display it. But there he is in his arm mode, so... Let's get right down to robot mode. So let's take these off and put them off to the side again. Straighten out his legs, rotate his waist so it's facing forward. Bring that down. Bring this panel down. Revealing his face. Let me raise the camera up a little bit more because he is quite a tall figure. There we go. And once you've done that, you can split his legs. Peg in very securely. You can take this panel here and just fold it back up the way it was. And then take this and again just be careful, just grab it at the hinge itself, bring that down, bring that around, and bring that down against the back of the leg. Second verse, same as the first, bring that down, bring that up, take this, bring that back, rotate it, bring that down against the back of the leg. And then you can bring down his foot. Right there, bring the foot down right there, and then you want to bring this wheel down just like that, just to get things out of the way. And now you're going to take this wheel, bring it back, you're going to split it right here, bring it out to the sides, take these pieces right here, bring them forward, 
These are on hinges so you can angle them however you want. And once you have that done, you can just bring the arms down right here. Open up this panel, flip out the hand, which on mine are really hard to get out. Ah, a bit too tight. There we go. Flip that out. Close that back up. Do the same thing here. Second verse, same as the first. Like that. Flip that out. Again, it's like really tight. And I loosened the screws too, and it's still tight. Flip that out. Close that up. Then we can take this and bring that back up where it was against his back. Right there. And there you go. There you have Turbo Ejector in his robots mode. And he looks really cool. Very nicely done. Very cool looking updated version here of Afterburner. Getting closer on the head sculpt. You can see. Little focus. There we go. Nice head sculpt. Nice silver paint. Very, very nice light piping on these guys. You can see those eyes just glow. Very, very well done. And all around, like I said, very nicely done. Nice molded details. The camera will focus. There we go. It's very nicely done all around. Very cool. You got some more silver, some more gold paint apps there. Very cool. And again, I have no idea why these are on hinges. Why? Why are these on hinges? Why? Why are they? I don't know. But very, very cool. Um, Articulation-wise, his head is on the ball joint, so you can get some good wiggly, waggly action. The arms can rotate. They can do a full 360. Of course, the uh, the wheels get in the way. Hey. They can do a full 360. They can go in and out. One limitation that this figure has, as well as the uh, second figure from their set, which I'll be reviewing tomorrow, is... um. They have outward movement this way, and you can see that's even that's a little bit limited just due to, you know, his shoulders being high. But there's no outward movement any other way. So, you know, if you have his arm straight out, there's no pulling that arm out. It's only outward movement when his arm is straight down. Anywhere else, you cannot make use of that anyway whatsoever. You can actually have him kind of pointing his arms outward. So, you know... You, Kind of finagle it a little bit to get him to hold his arm outward, but eh, it's definitely a limitation uh, with, with the articulation here. Um, he does have a bicep swivel. He does have an elbow with nice full range of movement there. He does have a wrist swivel. The hands do open and close. He does have a waist swivel. He Yours will not come with cat hair. Mine's always do for some reason. I don't know why. Legs go forward, they go back, nice ratchet joints, in and out, you do get a thigh swivel. The legs have slightly under 90 degrees there of bend, and again, like I said, they do bend both ways, you can, you know, break his leg if you want. And the feet are on ball joints as well as a hinge right here, and you can kind of wiggle waggle the heel spur. And again, this is on a joint for some reason. I don't know. I, I really so there you have that. And of course you do have these pieces right here that we pulled off of Yoko mode. These can be incorporated into the robot mode. You just want to split them apart. You can take this transclearing orange piece and slide this forward. Like that. Slide that forward. And these will become little arm guns. And you'll see their pegs right here. They'll plug into the posts on his forearms. I mean, on the ports on his forearms, rather. So you can plug that on, and plug that on, like that. So there you go. And, of course, you can have him holding his guns. Just take the handle, flip it down. Flip that down. And, of course, you can still make use of those pegs on the side, and you can plug them onto his shoulders. You can plug them down here if you want. You can have ankle cannons. Why not? Dare I say why not? Who wouldn't want ankle cannons? I wouldn't mind having ankle cannons. Sure. I'll take them. And of course, if you want to, uh, if you don't want them holding the guns, you can still kind of, you know, pull this wheel back and make use of that port there for storage. Totally up to you. Again, it's your toy. Display it however you want. I don't care. You do what you want with your toys, and I'll do what I want with mine. So there you have that. One cool little feature, too, as you can see on the, uh, on the insides of that front wheel, they actually have, like, little transclearance orange fans there, and these are on hinges, so you can angle them down, so, you, <laughs> so he can VTOL himself around, which is pretty cool. That's a neat little added touch right there. 
And again, you can take these, they're on a the hinge, you can angle them however you want. So you can angle those guns on his shoulders. So there you have that. Get him standing here. There we go. Now, for comparison, here he is with Voyager Optimus. So you can see that he's uh, like a head shorter than Optimus. So there you have that. There he is with the deluxe. There he is with first aid. You can see definitely taller than first aid. And here he is with Warbitrons, not blast off. Again, just you can see that they're pretty much going for the same scale with these guys. So there you have that. But um, but yeah, as far as this guy goes, um, it's this figure is 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 filling me with with confidence. I mean, this is definitely it. Definitely feels like a step above their Bruticus figures. Now, keep in mind. My Bruticus, I was I was lucky. My Bruticus figures did not suffer from the rush of QC problems that other people's did. The only real problem I had with my Bruticus was that the uh, the combined mode ankle ratchet snapped. But luckily, they sent replacements for that, so I was able to fix it. Other than that, I didn't really have any QC issues with my Bruticus. Um, some people, you know, and I said when I reviewed when I reviewed it that you know there were you know QC issues across the board from stress marks to things just straight up snapping. This guy, honestly, he feels good. There's only one instance of, you know, tolerances, Warbitron tolerances. But, uh, but other than that, I mean, he feels a lot. He, he feels very solid. He feels good. Um, it, it feels like a definite step above. Now, of course, I'll say this, and somebody will probably jump into the comment section. I bought this figure, and everything broke on it. I don't know. <laughs> I can only go by my copy of the toy. That's all I can base my opinion on is my copy of the toy. You know, so as far as my copy of the toy goes, it feels good. It feels like a step above what they did before with their Bruticus figures. And uh, it's, it's, it's putting a smile on my face. It's making me smile. I'm, I'm hopeful now that this will be a very, very good set. Um, again, the instructions... Still could be a bit better. Again, they're still throwing stuff in the box and not telling you what it's for, what to do with it. Uh, these are on joints for I have no idea what reason because the instructions say anything about it. They still need to work on their instructions because, you know, that's a thing they need to do. <laughs> because, you know, being told what to do with random things and random hinges, I, I think would be important. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. I'm old-fashioned that way. But uh, otherwise, like I said, this is filling me with a lot of confidence for this set. And I'm definitely looking forward to the rest of it. So there you have it. If you would like this figure or any of Warbitron's other offerings, you can always check out BigBadToyStore.com for availability. There will be a link in the description down below. Do check it out. And I'm also going to make a playlist for these guys, so do check out that playlist as I update it with new reviews. And uh, I've also been setting up a lot of playlists of other stuff, so you can check those out as well. So, I think that's pretty much it. So, don't forget to check out M Games, check out Lori Plan, follow me on Twitter, all of that good stuff down in the description below. And I think that's pretty much all there is to say. So, there is the Warbatron Turbo Ejector, and this is M Go saying, remember, you don't stop playing because you grow old, you grow old because you stop playing. Be geek, be proud, palm in your face. <laughs> Well, Afterburner, while we're waiting for the rest of the team to show up, um, what do you want to do? Um, that, I don't know, sir. Um, you want to watch TV? Not really. Would you like some pizza bagels? Mm, no, no, it's okay. Um, how about TV? N n no, sir. Pizza bagels? I, uh, no, no, sir. No, thank you. Well, there's just no pleasing you then. Jeez, man. This is going to be rough.